Welcome and good morning, everyone. Happy to have you along on this rainy Wednesday morning here in Southfield, Michigan. My name is Randy Lober, Growth Marketing Manager here at Action Benefits, and happy to take you through today's session where we'll talk a little bit about uh, how you can use some no-cost tools to unlock your next set of prospects in the under 65 or over and or over 65 markets. I, we have a few new faces joining us today, so welcome aboard. If this is your first time or one of your first times here with Action Benefits. Happy to have you along. Uh, just by way of history, so you know who we are and who I am and why I'm credible and why you should listen to me here today. Uh, we got our start in the 1950s as a retail agency helping people with health and life uh, decisions in the post-war era. In the 1980s, you know, uh, business carried on through the 1980s where we became a general agent for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan here and supported them in growing their distribution channel throughout the state of Michigan here. And as our business continued to evolve, uh, we are still present there in the group market, but we've also uh, opened up to the Medicare in under 65 markets here as well to really provide a full service solution for our agents uh, to really help them succeed in making their book of business uh, flourish throughout and across all three of those markets. My role here as our growth marketing manager is to help you, our agent community, grow your books and maintain your books in the best ways uh, that we can. And one way we can do that is by, again, showing you uh, the purpose of today's session, where you can might want to look for uh, prospects coming up. Uh, and to be fair, when we conceptualize this session, when we put it together and put it on the calendar, uh, the reality about prospecting for Medicare was a little bit different than it is right now here today. Uh, remember the CMS final rule uh, really put the kibosh on a lot of lead gen activities, right? Or at least made lead gen activities more expensive. It put the kibosh on a lot of marketing dollars that you might uh, be used to getting from FMOs or from carriers and really put the onus on you, independent agents, to get out there and uh, continue prospecting without maybe as much support as you're used to. And so we thought this session was a, was a good bridge to that, right? To show you some areas where you might want to look. But last Wednesday, just before we all broke for the holiday, there uh, of course stayed portions of those final rules. Um, so right now we're kind of so which delays those rules from going into effect until the court case uh, court case plays out. To be fair, but for now we're operating under the assumption that the rule will go into effect eventually, which does put some of those guardrails on some of the funding that you might be used to of getting. Um, and if the rule does get stricken down, well, then that's a pleasant surprise and we can support you in some other ways that maybe are used to being supported as well as carrier partners can support you in some of those ways. All that being said, let's talk about, you know, the purpose of today's session, where we can find some prospects to grow our business. I uh, should point out a few things today if you want to get a hold of me throughout today's session down at the bottom or on the right side of your screen, depending on how you, your screen set up. There is a chat feature, good way to say hi to me throughout today's session. Say, that's a nice picture like Michigan or whatever it is you need to say. Uh, but if you want to make sure you get my attention like right away, the Q&A feature is, uh, gives me a big red flash notification, lets me know there's something that wants uh, or needs immediate attention. I will get there as soon as I can throughout the course of today's session. All that said, here we go. Let's, let's strap in and talk about the U.S. Census Bureau. And that is where we'll be visiting uh, and most of the tools we'll talk about here today. These tools are provided to everyone uh, at no cost. And when I say the Census Bureau, you're probably going, uh, the Census Bureau, the one that annoys me every 10 years and collects information about my household. There's this, you know, pages long form I have to fill out. Yes, we are talking about that one that does do the Census every 10 years. But in addition to that, they run about 180 other surveys, 180 other programs that uh, help the government and businesses, frankly, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, take the pulse on what's happening uh, in our communities to help dictate federal funding and state funding and so on and so forth. But they also have some uh, tools specifically uh, built for small business owners such as yourselves. So out of interest of us, we want to look at three different surveys here today, and we'll show you a tool that kind of puts them all together. There's the American 
community survey, which is updated each December. That survey uh, really talks to households about how they're uh, performing their experience in the past year or so. It's like a mini version of that 10 year census. There's also a county business pattern survey, um, which is updated each June, which makes this session really timely. What that business, pa business pattern survey does is tells us where, where firms are growing, where uh, they're not growing, where they're shrinking, and can help inform some prospecting in the group market as well, which we'll dip into just a little bit because as I looked at our roster, I noticed a lot of you uh, work in the small group uh, market as well. And there's also an economic census, uh, which is a deep dive into both uh, businesses and to into households, how they're performing, how they're feel, uh, feeling over the past five years. Uh, last survey was conducted in 2022. That data made its way into the system we're going to explore here today in March of this year, which again really makes the session pretty timely. It's not real-time data we're going to look at here today, but it is relatively fresh, which could give you, you know, a competitive edge when you're looking to figure out where you're going to prospect next. So we're going to visit uh, a website here today. I'm going to show you where go, uh, how to get there as well, but it is census.gov slash data slash data tools slash cbb.html. I'll throw that in the chat for you a little bit later on. The tool we're going to use today is the Census Business Builder. It helps us visualize all the data we just talked about here in one place. And I'll show you a, a shortcut to get there in, in a moment here as well. Uh, but to get to the tool, there's a few things uh, we want to answer here today. I want to show you a few key questions you can answer using the tool. You are, of course, free to experiment uh, beyond what I show you here in today's session. This is just giving you a taste, whetting your appetite, so to speak, about what you can find within the tool. Um, and then either me or your account manager or anyone here at Action Benefits is happy to walk you through, uh, you know, maybe some unique cases or some individual cases you might be interested in. At any rate, three things we're gonna look at today. First thing that uh, maybe got you in the door here today is we wanna look at which zip codes or which census tracts, which are uh, neighborhoods within those zip codes is the best way to put it. Have the highest concentration of people over age 65. And I also wanna know of those areas, which of them have a high uninsured rate? So where might I find uh, some areas that are rich for Medicare prospecting? I'm also going to look at zip codes that have median incomes over the Michigan's Medicaid limit for a family of three and show you how to filter the data so you can look at a median household size of around three, right? So maybe if you're prospecting for under 65 or marketplace coverage, you can find people who are likely ineligible for Medicaid um, and maybe in the market for marketplace coverage here. And because, as I mentioned, a lot of you, as I looked at our registration list for today, work in the group market, we'll spend uh, a little bit looking at uh, a hypothetical group question. Maybe suppose, for example, you are a small group agent and your niche, uh, the, you know, the industry you serve is restaurants. Uh, we'll look at how we can use some of the data here to find those restaurants that employ somewhere between 20 and 49 people, which might be prime targets for offering group benefits. Um, and again, these are all kind of unique case studies. You are free uh, to explore as we like uh, take a look at the data here throughout today. That said, I'm going to stop sharing that screen, bring another one up here. That is the Census uh, Business Builder. And I want you to see what is in front of me here. And we will look at this. If I move this out of your way so you can see it. All right. So if you're now seeing my new screen, uh, all you need to do to get here is cbb.census.gov, and it's going to bring you up to a screen that looks like this one. By the way, I see my camera's on. You know today's a live demo. It's uh, going to take me a lot of thinking here today. When I think, my tongue tends to like stick out and flop all over the place. So I'm going to spare you that visual and uh, just uh, turn the camera off. But here we are, today's a live demo, let's get started. When you visit cbb.census.gov, it's gonna pop up a screen that looks like this, and it's gonna ask you where you wanna search at. What do you wanna look at? 
It will also give you the option to take a tour of everything the platform has to offer. I'll be your tour guide here today, um, but of, of course you're welcome to use that uh, tour uh, when you use your own, uh, do your own research here as well. So I'm gonna take a look at uh, Southfield, Michigan zip code 48075. That's where Action Benefits is based uh, at. And you'll notice that behind the screen here, you start seeing a grayed out map pop up. And that's because all of our variables are blank and none of our, we don't have any data that we're looking for here just yet. I um, wanna give you a quick tour of the screen before we get into looking at that data here. First things first is we can always bump this up to full screen. So if you want to uh, have a more uh, robust view of your data, you can do that. The download button here will download out all the data you see from your current map, uh, which is a great way to maybe get information, information over to a mailing house or a, an advertising firm you might be working with to drive up in uh, business or to just you know, have a note, you know, something for your notepad to, to figure out where you want to go. The help dialog, of course, will give you some help with this. Uh, you'll see some other spots here where we can start manipulating data and choosing what we want to see. The, the industries tab is really where uh, you'll find information about specific businesses. We'll come back to there a bit later on where we, when we deal with some of our, uh, that group question we wanted to take a look at here today. What's gonna be important for us first here is taking a look at this middle section where we start picking up some variables we wanna look at. CBB or Census Business Builder allows you to compare up to two variables, a primary and secondary variable, and it lets you compare those variables at a variety of scales. You can look at the entire state, you can look at metro areas, counties, cities, towns, zips, and those individual census tracts or those neighborhoods for both your primary and secondary variable. And there is a ton of data loaded into these maps. Uh, you can look at variables that talk about consumers and residents where we'll spend some time here today. You can also look at business data on an annual or quarterly basis. You can look at workforce data. So what's growing, what's not growing here. If you are interested, maybe you work in P and C, right? Um, property and casualty, and you want to know where hot, you know, building areas are. So you can go prospect new homeowners. That's an option here too, not something we'll show you here today, but that's, that's possible. You can always look for consumer spending. You can look for jobs data. So where are jobs uh, being created? Where are jobs being uh, removed here is, is the way the Census Business Bureau puts it. And you can uh, choose some own variables um, if you were to upload your own data. Probably nothing we're going to be uh, concerned with here immediately. At any rate, first thing we want to know about is where we can find people that are uh, over 65. So I'm going to choose data for consumers and residents, and we're going to choose demographic uh, characteristics. That's going to give us some information about ages and so on and so forth. And if I scroll down here, I can search down to uh, percent 65 years and older. And if I click out of that screen here, I, if I look at zip codes here in 48075, looking at my map, I see that Southfield, Michigan's zip code, or this zip code within Southfield to be more precise, has about 18.9% of the population that is a 65 or over, so Medicare eligible. That's good news, tells me it could be prospect rich for me. If I were to zoom out a little bit, I'm able to do that, and you'll see data pop up for the surrounding zip codes here, the darker blue colors are uh, have higher percentages of 65 years and over. The lighter green zip codes have lower percentages that meet that threshold. I can also take a look at this data on a city or town level. So I can see how Southfield compares to example for Beverly Hills or how uh, Hazel Park compares to Madison Heights. I can also look at this data on the neighborhood level. It's going to take a minute to populate. But if I were to uh, zoom in here in the south field where we were centered at, I can see that this neighborhood right around the lodge, for example, has uh, more people that are 65 than this area around Civic Center Park with the library here by our office and the Mary Thompson House. 
So I would know that if I want to go, I can't go knocking on doors in the Medicare market, but if I wanted to put a mailer out that this neighborhood right around the lodge could be a better uh, choice for me. But knowing where people are 65 is not enough to make an effective advertising spend. I also want to know where people are likely to be uninsured. So I can filter some of this data here as well by using the filter tab up in the upper right. I'm going to add a filter. Again, we're looking at consumers and residents. We're looking at data about people here, not businesses. But instead of demographics, I want to look at a socioeconomic characteristic. So their social status and their economic status. How are they, how are they making money? And when I scroll down through these categories, I will find a percent of people with health coverage and can start looking from here. Uh, the lowest figure available on this map, so the lowest county here is 94.5%. The highest figure here is 98.6%. I know that 98.6% is probably not going to be prospect rich for me. Those people already have coverage. But if I drop down to maybe 95% or so, I can finish that and apply that filter. Now, as I zoom out, my map changes here. Uh, for simplicity's sake, let's go to that city or town level for a moment so we can take a look at Southfield and get our bearings. <clears throat> um, okay, that data did not load as fast as we wanted it to, so let's take a look at that census tract. So still here in Southfield, uh, I can look again at the area around the lodge and see that there's about a quarter of, of you know, this area here is 65% uh, or over, and there is an uninsured rate uh, that matches our criteria here of about 95%. So if I wanted to go out prospecting for Medicare, I wanted to you know, put mailers or emails out to an area or social media ads, that could be a good candidate for where I'd want to go. Want to uh, pause for a minute and check the chat, see if you have any questions here before we talk about uh, some other uh, some other things here. See in the chat is empty, but go ahead and let me know if there's anything that comes to your minds. If you want to make sure you can chat to me, okay, you can. All right. All right, so the next thing we want to take a look at is maybe you're interested in some under 65 business and you want to grow that portion of your business. I'm going to trash some of these filters here and start thinking about uh, some of those questions. So if I was looking for under 65 business, one thing I might want to do is zero in on places that I know are likely not Medicaid eligible. Uh, not that those populations aren't you know, don't need our help, don't need our services. But if I'm looking for an advertising spend or looking for some time to spend some time prospecting, I want to know that it's going to be a viable area where, that makes sense for me. So I want to, again, uh, choose a different primary variable this time. I want to look at uh, the socioeconomic characteristics and I want to look at the median household income here. So that's going to be the variable that pops up for us. Of course, if we click out of that, we're going to see areas like Franklin and Beverly Hills have higher median household incomes than uh, you might see in Southfield. If I were to look, go at the city or town level, uh, that pops up more clearly. You see Berkeley, you see Clawson. Uh, as you move out of the you know this area, you see some other lighter colors. Uh, that follows the patterns you might uh, traditionally expect. But if I really want to dig into it, right, I want to find uh, only those areas that have uh, median incomes above the Medicaid threshold and have at least three people in them, so that they are a family, right? Um, there's some ways I can filter the data over here. So I click on Add Filter. Again, this time I'm dealing both with socioeconomic characteristics. First thing I want to take a look at is average household size. I can go all the way down to 1.8, but I'm really interested in families here. I'm going to kick that up to just about three. 
uh, to make sure that I can capture some of these people, some of these families here. The other thing I want to do is take a look at some of their social, I want to look at that median household income and filter that for Michigan's Medicaid level. So $33,064 is the threshold for Michigan Medicaid for a family of three. So we'll take a look at that. And if I keep this at the city or town detail, well, I, I see that maybe I, there's not a ton of areas that fit these criteria, right? I could look at Salem Township, could look at Dearborn, could look at Hamtramck or Bingham Farms. But where this gets powerful is if I bring it down to the census tract uh, level, the neighborhood level, now I've got some good neighborhoods that could be candidates for marketplace coverage and could warrant some of my advertising attention or my marketing attention. So I could uh, kind of zip around here and look and see that this census tract, way up here near Heartland, median income of 120,000, um, that and uh, again meets those insurance uh, that or sorry that median household size criteria we took a look at so that could work for us as i zoom back out i'm going to see some more places come in you know we can take a look at in the middle of pontiac here could be a good uh, you know situation for us to take a look at could go up here to uh, where, are, where, where are we up here we are if i want to look at cities here we're in Oakland Township up here, and that will pop up for us here in just a moment as well. Um, so again, I, you can kind of cruise around the state, see what makes sense for your geography, your business model, and again, play with all those filters to see what makes most sense to you. Um, the other thing I want to—I promised you here because a few of you, or many of you rather, are in the group market is taking a look at how we can find some prospects uh, in some of those industries I might be interested in. So say, for example, I am an agent or an agency that works primarily with restaurants. That's my niche, right? That's who I want to work with. Um, you are free, of course, to have whatever ever niche, but that's the example we're going to use here today. If I come up to this top left filter here, this custom industries tab, I can either search by NAIC code or by the actual name of the industry I want to look at. So I want to look for restaurants and other eating places. I can plop that in here. And then there's some things I've got to figure out over here. In the middle, I'm no longer looking at households. Instead, I want to look um, at some business data. And I should point out that uh, business data is only available at the county level here. Uh, it's not available at these smaller scales, and that's because the Census Bureau doesn't publish at the small, smaller scales because it doesn't want to, uh, you know, I, give any identifying information for the business for those businesses here. But if, for example, I looked at the annual figures for a business, and I, you know, wanted to see those people, those areas that had uh, twenty to forty nine employees, those small groups that might be good targets and fit what I do in the small group market. I'm going to have some uh, data available to me here. <laughs> if I were to scroll out some, or sorry, zoom out some to be more precise, I start getting a color-coded map of counties here. And it uh, follows some patterns you might expect. But again, uh, so if I look in Genesee County, for example, there's 173 restaurants uh, that, that have 20 to 49 employees. So that might be an area I could do some door knocking or some advertising uh, to those specific retailers, right? Uh, as you work with maybe an advertising house or a firm like that, and you're trying to get in front of them or you're doing your own door knocking, that could be risk prospect rich for you. You could look at St. Clair County, for example, and see there's 63 restaurants uh, waiting for you to, to reach over there. In Wayne County, you've got 646 re restaurants uh, that fit these criteria. So there's lots of different things you can take a look at um, to really you know, find out where that next spot you want to make your beachhead or make your foothold at. So all that said, uh, that's the tool in a nutshell. Uh, lots of power here, lots of areas you can zoom in and find those, you know, those consumers you might be interested in marketing your services to. Uh, I'm going to take a minute to switch screens and take a look at the chat. 
as we talk about what we do with this data or some things you can do with this data now that you have it in your hands. And please also feel free to put in any questions you might have or anything you might need clarification on here. Okay, I am back. Everything is set up. You should now be seeing the presentation we started with here today, and we're talking about some of those questions we answered. So we talked about, you know, some areas we can find some prospect rich uh, or Medicare prospects. We talked about where we might prospect for under 65 business. And we talked about where you could prospect for some group business, at least if you work in uh, with restaurants primarily. Now the big question is, you have this data, you have this power, what do you do with it? First thing, I, I would be remiss if I did not remind you uh, that no matter what you do next, always stay compliant with guidelines in your target market. So for example, if you wanna go door to door and door knocking to, to solicit your under 65 business, that's totally okay, but you can't do that for Medicare, right? Cause that violates any number of Medicare rules uh, that you can't do. So um, just be aware of compliance concerns as we talk about these things. I'll point them out as we talk about some of these things you can do with the data here as well today, uh, but just, need to put that disclaimer up up front so you can't say Randy told me to do this later on. And the driving question that you know kind of dictates what you're going to do next with this data is what are you willing to spend? And there's a bit of a trade-off here in, in what you spend. On the left, if we think about these six activities as a continuum, on the left side, you have activities that are a bit more expensive to be sure but I uh, have some broader reach to them. On the right side of your screen, you have some things that are less expensive, but, but narrower reach, right? Like asking for referrals. It doesn't cost you anything except a few more seconds at the end of a call. Um, but again, you're only talking to one person and I know the power of networking, the power of referrals, so on and so forth. But if we're talking about one-time investments of energy, you know, there's some ways we can think about that. So let's talk about how we might I apply some of these things, starting on the left-hand side, moving all the way to the right-hand side. First thing you could do, and we have a few mailing houses we can recommend to you if you're interested, is you could partner with a mailing house who can run a campaign to help you publicize uh, your agency and the services that you offer. So if you have a particular city in mind or even zip codes in mind, or even those neighborhoods, those census tracts, that smallest data we looked at, uh, that's valuable to you, or that you think looks like a good area to, to spend, invest some time and money, you can work with that mailing house to craft some targeted mailings. Um, you can also, of course, pull you know postcards and stuff from your carrier partners, so you don't have to pay for the creative to be, to be done, so for the postcard to be made by the mailing house, and all you really need to do is them to you know help you Get that stuff out there, right? And build your mailing list and put things out there. Should point out though, that any material that you send needs to be compliant with the rules of your target markets. So if you're sending Medicare material, of course you need to stay uh, inside all those guidelines. Um, but that said, you could really talk about building your agency's uh, visibility in these areas and have some really you know generic kind of brand awareness activities going on in these areas too. The second thing you can do, which uh, can be a little more cost effective than working with the mailing house is called Every Door Direct Mail. And this is a service offered by the United States Postal Service. Essentially what you do is you pick out neighborhoods or pick out cities and individual mail carrier routes and say, I want you, Mr. Postal Carrier or Mrs. Postal, postal carrier or miss perhaps, uh, to, to deliver my flyer to every house and every business on this route. And for a flat per piece, or per piece cost, you're gonna see those things, uh, you know, the mail, mail system will deliver your flyer, your ad, your newspaper, your circular, whatever it is you've developed to those places. Uh, the Postal Service itself does recommend a few different shops you can work with. Again, we can recommend some print shops and, and firms with you as well. And even uh, if you want to make it real easy, we can help direct you to some good materials inside your partner carrier portals 
that don't need any other CMS approval, that don't need any other approval from carriers. You can just take them, put your name on them, drop them in the mail, and, and uh, let the Postal Service do the work for you. Again, I need to say that anything you use, Third thing you could do, and this is something, uh, if you're interested, I'll spend some time with you uh, with this on Facebook next week and showing you how you can get some ads in front of people on uh, both Facebook and Instagram, is you can uh, purchase ads in areas for consumers most valuable to you. So not only can you work in geographies with a lot of social media ads, you can pick out cities or zip codes or census tracts, but you can also pick out characteristics. So for example, what I'll show you next week uh, is that you can, it's really easy to craft an aging in campaign because you can target people in Facebook that Facebook knows are 64 years old and have a birthday coming up. Um, which is terrifying, frankly, that Facebook knows that about you. But if you are a small uh, business or a Medicare agent, you know, willing to invest in some of that aging business, it's your best friend, right? Um, that you know can help you maximize some of that spend. So I'll work with you that a bit next week and show you how to get that done. Again, of course, anything you do here must be compliant with your target market. And uh, if you're looking to grow your Medicare business, of course, I uh, would highly recommend you stick with your carrier materials here. They make it pretty friendly to do this. Fourth thing you can do in uh, talking specifically about the Medicare market is get some boots on the ground. This is kind of expensive in terms of uh, time, but maybe less so in terms of actual uh, expense. Again, be, be compliant with CMS guidelines, but now that you know where you have some areas that could be of interest to you, that might be where you spend time doing informal marketing events. So spending time in pharmacies or community centers or we're smack dab in the middle of a fair and festival season that you could you know, set up a booth or a table or a kiosk in these communities. Of course, you can also identify your senior centers, pickleball courts, everything else, so on and so forth here. But now you have a better idea of where, you know, where might be a better, the best uh, fit for you to spend your time here. Of course, I, maybe you're looking for formal marketing or formal educational events, and now you have a better idea of, of uh, in addition to your local library, what communities might need you the most. So you can reach out to those uh, libraries and start building relationships with senior centers. And again, if you do have an advertising budget, you can uh, wallpaper, you know, print out flyers and wallpaper every bulletin board you see. Go to doctor's offices, pharmacies, uh, restaurants, hardware stores, wherever you want to be, wherever you can get in front of those kind of community gathering areas and uh, make yourself known. In the under 65 market, much uh, the same advice applies, although with that census tract data, you do have the option, should you so choose, to go door to door <coughs> um, and solicit business that way. I haven't heard of many folks having much success with that approach. Um, to be frank, maybe that's because a lot of folks don't try it. They see it as a significant time investment and maybe it just isn't all that successful. Uh, your mileage may vary, but just want, uh, want to state that it is an option, of course, in that market, um, especially if you're looking to, to you know, get out into some of those underserved communities, which might not have access to the digital ads or regular access to the digital ads you might try. Fifth thing you can do is look at community events and sponsorships. So I know, for example, I have uh, children in elementary school and nearly every week they're sending home flyers asking for money or fundraisers or so on and so forth and, and everything. And I'd rather just give them a flat, you know, $500 at the beginning of the year and say, don't bother me again. A lot of people aren't in that situation and schools are always gonna welcome money. They're always gonna welcome sponsorships and they're always happy to recognize you for any uh, sponsorships you do make. So, uh, you know, for like little, you know, for school-based fund runs and things like that, often you can get in the door for $150, $200. You can target a local school near you, get your name, logo, on you know a banner when they welcome people to the event or on the back of the t-shirt so uh, every child that goes to that school participate in the you know the, your that event that fun run will be a walking billboard for your agency um you can also think about again art fairs church festivals and things like that 
And uh, PTO and PTA events, you know, could be an option here as well. Um, especially, you know, those welcome uh, schools are already in the middle of planning welcome back events. What What's that barbecue going to look like in the fall? This could be a uh, you know, when they welcome people back in September, it's not really the fall um, yet. That could be an excellent, you know, this could be an excellent time right now to start reaching out and building some relationships with schools in those areas you're interested in. The other thing, of course, you could do, which is least expensive, but maybe most rewarding is uh, looking as figuring out how you work, you know, make your referral ask. Lots of you know, your clients, your customers probably don't know or at least aren't aware, or at least it's not top of mind that for a lot of you, referrals are the way you make your business, the, the way you, uh, that's the lifeblood of your business, right? Um, they don't know that that's how a lot of you, especially if you're just starting out or trying to make your way in the market, that's how you survive. And in this business, you get what you ask for. So Ask for the referral, right? Ask for them to pass your information along. So if you know someone who might be seeking Medicaid coverage, I can help. Or who do you know that's losing Medicaid coverage as the unwinding comes to an end? You know, asking those questions at the end of every appointment, right? Even appointments that you don't sell anything, right? Maybe someone else could benefit from working with you. Uh, maybe they know someone who's in the market for coverage. It's always a good thing to ask and build your word of mouth marketing that way, even if you have zero marketing or advertising uh, budget to spend. So I wanted to point that out for you too. As we near the closing stretch here today, uh, we talked about a few things you can do. We talked about a lot of data here today. Got a question for you. Uh, which of these strategies seems most doable at the moment for you and why? Go ahead and put a few words in the chat for me and I'll check in with you in just a moment. So a uh, few folks chiming in here. Glenn publicly says that uh, referrals always worth it. Uh, Stephanie brings up that social media, targeted social media could be worthwhile. So Stephanie, please join me next week, uh, uh, seven days from now to be exact. We'll talk about Facebook and uh, and Instagram ads first. Um, but as there's, you know, I'm always happy to talk more than one with people about other platforms. I have some experience working on <clears throat> LinkedIn, for example, could help, you know, if you're in the market for, you know, building your group business, you can find a lot of decision makers that way. Lots of different options for you there. Cynthia brings up community events and, and references here. Uh, now we might have a better idea of where you can find community events, right? Even if they're not in your community, maybe you reach out next door. Maybe you make the trip from uh, Livonia out to Southfield or vice versa, right? If you know that uh, you might have more prospects that fit your business model out that way. So lots of different things uh, you can take a look at here. And again, happy to talk with any of you or all of you about uh, you know, how you can make these strategies work for you. And again, happy to work with your account management team here at Action Benefits to help you out with that as well. That said, I promised you 45 minutes and uh, we're done in 40 here today. Um, so I uh, underestimated time for just a moment here today, but I do want to thank you all for your time and attention. This is a great way to get, you know, kind of get your feet wet with looking at where you can spend some uh, some marketing attention, some marketing time and dollars if you if you have them available to you. Um, and again, if uh, for those of you that already partner with us, thank you for your business and trusting us with supporting your business. And if you're not not yet partnered with us, of course, I'm happy to have that conversation with you about, you know, everything we can offer and help you support uh, you as you grow and maintain your book of business. If you're interested in anything about, you know, what we talked about here today or anything else that's going on in the health insurance industry, you can always check us out on LinkedIn at the Action Benefits Company. You can reach our public box at info at actionbenefits.com or call our main line at 248-356-3585. Uh, you're also welcome to reach out to your account manager at any point in time, should you uh, already be working with Action. And if you would, uh, if you're not yet partnered with Action, but would like some more information or want to talk about how we can help you with this or anything else, I just dropped my email that there in the chat, rlobertactionbenefits.com. Again, welcome any and all opportunity to help you grow your business. 
All that said, uh, thank you, Pamela, for coming out today. I appreciate your time and attention here, as always. To the rest of the audience, of, of course, I appreciate your time and attention here today, too. You're going to hear me stop the recording, uh, just so I don't have to edit out the, a bunch of dead air at the, uh, a little bit later on. But I'm happy to stick around for a few moments for any other questions or comments or concerns or even curse words if you have them. Hit me with whatever you got.